I'm Oxnard. I'm Dexter. Boss is here as well. <laughs> He's sitting He's back and eating having a drink. some peanuts. Um, all right. This week, uh, just a little announcement. We're going to be changing formats a little bit here because last format w- change. Yes, because last week, last week was a problem. Somebody blew it. It was no. I put in the in technical the difficulties. Technical difficulties as well as time issues as well as a lot of other things. But basically, what's going to happen tonight is the second we're done recording. This is on Monday. Yeah. About an hour and a half after we're done recording. The episode's going to go up. It's just going to be audio. Now, that doesn't mean there's not going to be cartoons. What I want the audience to do is tell us what segments of our discussion they would like to see animated. Also, as we're talking, there's going to be quite a few points where I think and you think and Boss thinks, hey, we should animate that part. And the idea being is just, you know, the people who want to hear our discussions, because we've been told that in the past that, hey... I don't really care about the cartoons. I don't even watch them. I just listen to you guys talk. That's people what love them or people don't care about them? Yeah, so people who want that, you're going to get your discussion as soon as possible from now on. People who want cartoons, what I'm going to do near the end of the week is release a, maybe like a five to ten minute video of little excerpts from our discussion where, yeah, you know, where we make idea. jokes and stuff like that. And also I think it's going to help us get a uh, better entry point into our channel because I think a lot of our videos are like 40 minutes <laughs> with like a hundred views, yeah, and like no one's Lee. gonna click that. So, and people like to see stuff. A lot of our videos are just audio based, but people are on YouTube to watch things usually. Yeah, I'm starting to learn that after a year and a half of doing this, <laughs> it's finally... turns out a website designed to have videos on it <laughs> is usually used for people to watch those videos so instead weird. of just listen. So yeah, that's just to avoid uh, what happened last week where the video was a week late. But don't worry. We're still going to be entertaining, and we're now about to talk about The Lion and the Rose, Season yes. 4. Oh, man. Episode 2, Game of Thrones. I took some notes, Dexter. Yes. A lot of stuff happened, a lot of stuff to talk about. Indeed. Because there's a lot of changes from the books. Ah, very yes. Interesting. So I want to get your ideas to where it's going without getting too spoilerish. All right. Um, but to start things off, the show starts off with a very warming Ramsey Snow scene. <laughs> oh, yeah, how touching. Here we have Ramsey and the two prostitutes, right? Those are the two girls. Uh, no, see, I don't know that they were both the prostitutes. I actually couldn't remember who those girls were. All I know is that apparently one of them was determined to be making the other one jealous. I guess one was his girlfriend, and then I this think... other, like, I just assumed she was a housemaid. I assumed they or... were the two prostitutes he had sent in, because I remember one was blonde, one was brunette. Oh, is that right? And then remember he like, he's grabbing their yeah. asses. So I thought those were, like, his lovers, and then... Over time, since so much time has passed, now one of the girls is so jealous of the other one. So he's like, all right, boss is shaking his head. Boss, what do you think? <laughs> no. Done and done. Dexter, you just I, think one's a housemaid. Uh, yeah, I'm unsure. Uh, I, I, that's a, certainly a possibility, but I can't remember what they looked like. I think that was them. It might have been. Yeah, someone, someone, someone sure. will let us know. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. And then we get to see how broken <laughs> Theon has become. Oh, man. Also, that woman that I guess Ramsey is with, she's just as sick as him. That was such a disturbing scene. I was just immediately disturbed. Yeah. And she's being chased. She has the arrow through, and then the dogs eat her up. It's that just, was disgusting, It's a pure man. nightmare uh, where Ugh. she's just, like, in the ravine, and you see the two dogs. Like, I've had nightmares like that with some wild animals. <laughs> where your where your miniature poodle is, <laughs> is chasing you <laughs> yes. and just eats your face off. And I'm just running and trying to get away, and I can't look back, because if I look back, then he's going to get me. I just have to focus on getting ahead, because <laughs> any look back is going to spare me milliseconds that could be spent focusing on the front. You, you trip in a creek, and you pause for a moment you hear like a a little yapping in the back in the distance <laughs> oh, he's getting closer <laughs> oh god keep moving keep moving oxnard and uh to stay with the ramsey stuff then we have uh roose bolton oh my god that was such an awesome that was one of my favorite scenes of the, the episode because roose bolton the g- actor who plays roose bolton yeah. is fucking fantastic he comes in to heron hall uh he's got his new fat fray wife <laughs> walda uh, Who, boss, the reason why she's so fat is because... I remember that. Okay, oh, you yeah. remember that? Okay, yeah. It's not because he has, like, a fat fetish or something. <laughs> well, maybe he does. Oh, that would be, I, like, I just don't be think... like a, a double hitter right there. See, you know what the thing is with Roose Bolton is he just doesn't give a shit, like, if she's fat, if she's skinny, or whatever. It's just all to serve, like, just the purpose of be- being successful. It's all for power and yeah. wealth. That's all it is. Yeah. That's all he's about. And uh, that's all he cares about with Ramsey's use, too. That's the same thing. Like, when Ramsey disappoints him, as he finds when he... Roose Bolton sees a reek, and uh, 
you know how broken he is he's been dismembered he has no dick mm-hmm. uh you know he's pissed off at Ramsey because he was going to trade him because mm-hmm. Moat Callan is under the control of the Greyjoys mm-hmm. and uh he needs that so he can take control of the north and so he's pissed at Ramsey basically fucked him over there mm-hmm. and it's going to make it very difficult for him so he's there he's telling him you're not you're not a, a Bolton you're a Snow uh so you're not really family here so now you've just been embarrassing me wasting my time uh you know he he uh issued uh, like uh, terms with uh, the gray joys without his consent he said uh, uh, to ramsey before that pissed him off but then when he sees how like obedient reek is that was great he has him uh, ramsey has reek shave him and now he has inside information yes he knows that the two star kids are alive so, now so he's gonna have even more of a chance to have a hostage on his hands. Yeah, and Ramsey proves himself useful there, and so then all of a sudden, Roos changes, Bolton changes his turn, uh, changes his tune, and is like, "Oh, okay, well, uh, if you're says, successful, I'll change my position on you." Yeah, Ramsey also said, "Like I already tried to make a deal with them. I sent them his dick, and <laughs> yeah, you know, like." But that's what that pissed him off more, though. Yeah, because he's like, "Great, so now you're just well, you're not wanted- a Bolton. You're doing these things. You have to consent with me." His his point still stands. He made the attempt. He might have done it in his Ramsey Snow like way, <laughs> perhaps a bit <laughs> odd, but. You Which, know. after that scene, I don't know if you noticed, after the scene where Roos and Ramsey are talking about Theon mm-hmm. and, he, you know, all the stuff that's happened to him, you see a big sausage being plopped down onto Tyrion's plate. In and the very Tyrion does scene. this hilarious move where he goes, chop! Like <laughs> yeah, he gets, yeah. They hit it off the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, but that was nuts, too. I, I really thought for a second that they may have Theon cut Ramsey's throat there. But then I was like, well, don't be stupid. And I also thought, if I'm Roose Bolton, I'm like, well, why would this guy... Is this guy that stupid now? He's going to cut Ramsey's throat right in front of us? He knows that we'll kill him. Yeah. So, like... No, he knew, like, he knew he was taking a chance. He was like, okay, let's see what he's going to do. I know my son's crazy, but is he this crazy? Yeah. It, like, he's crazy. He's not stupid. I'm pretty sure in the books, I don't think they addressed it here, like, he really is so insane. Like, he, I think he's killed all of... Uh, yeah, you all yeah. of the other uh, children Bears, that Roose yeah. Bolton had. Right? Oh, I think we talked about that before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck you, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Just sitting in the corner drinking wine. Oh, like eight times. Oh, the other thing I was going to bring up is Theon is a very good shaver. That was a very th- quick and. It was, yeah. and he didn't even touch the mustache, but somehow that was shaved. <laughs> yeah. And it was in like no. They see him shaving. He was shaving off camera. Yeah, like, but while Roos is talking, he's he's still shaving. Yeah, but still, you know, when you shave, it's like, you do one or two passes sometimes, unless it's a very, you know, sharp razor. I don't know. I don't know. I don't imagine it was a very sharp razor. Look at where they are. And it not a single nick. Dull. Just perfect. I thought he was going to nick him by accident, and then that was going to piss Ramsey off, and then Theon was going to get punished. Going to cut off his other penis. <laughs> the secret penis that the girls don't know about. Oh, yeah, that's right, ladies. I know I'm breaking the man code, bringing up the secret Dude, penis. Dude, come on! <laughs> what the hell? Now they're always going to be searching for it. Yeah, They'll well, never find it. They'll never find it, because we're men, and They'll we know never, where to put know, it. It's, it's the place you least expect. Mm-hmm. That's right it is. Moving on. We get to a scene with Tyrion <laughs> Cut and Jamie <laughs> interacting. Yes. Now, this is what I love of watching the show, especially as people who've read the book. In the books... No, like maybe there might be one little thing in the first book where Tyrion and Jamie talk, but they never meet because in the book, Jamie doesn't get back until after Joffrey dies. Yes, that's right. So now you have Jamie interacting with these people who, you know, you just wonder what the writers are going to have him do. <clears throat> the other interesting thing is he starts saying, like, oh, I need to train my sword hand. Mm-hmm. And so. <laughs> Yeah. In so the, they're they're talking. Well, go ahead. Sorry. In the book, Bronn is not the one who's training with Jamie. No, it's Sir Ilan Payne. Ilan Payne, who which took is Ned perfect. Stark's head off. Who's yeah. the executioner? Who has no tongue? Yeah. So it's funny because they're talking about you know I need someone who can't say who won't say anything yeah. about it and blah blah blah. And, and so, I was like, are they really going to bring? Because Ilan Payne, like you see him a few times in the show. Like, are they, are they really going to show like Ilan Payne and start bringing a character who can't talk on a show that's basically like mostly dialogue? Well, it would make sense just for that purpose, but, you know, I understand why they weren't going to go there. I haven't even seen Ilan Payne since that season, I don't think. I don't even know where he is. So when Bronn showed up, I was like, oh, and then my mind started going, wow, that's a really good idea for the show, because 
these are two characters that I really would love to see like <laughs> two of, like two of your favorite characters yeah. interacting with each other. It was and, really funny. Uh, it makes yeah. We need to do our spoiler episode so we can talk more. Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, but it it makes sense both ways. In the book, it works obviously because who's Ellen Payne going to tell? And then in the book, they just talk about how Ellen Payne, like you know, Jamie's struggling so much with his left hand uh, during the sword play, and then Ellen Payne, they just describe like this weird like clicking noise that he makes when he's yeah, laughing. He's just like ah, right because ah, he has like no tongue. he has no tongue. Yeah, it's just gone. Yeah, and so. I remember his uh, introduction is like. When he was said, "Oh, I need someone to train with," he's not going to talk, and he's someone said, "Oh, yeah, I know just a person." Or Jamie figures it out, and he goes up to like Elon Payne's room, and it's just like wine bottles. It smells like death in there. You can tell <laughs> yeah, you, like, yeah. And he just Elon Payne just like gets up from bed and looks at him, and Jamie's like, "We have to train or something." And he just it's like a predator. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like who oh my is God. this guy? What kind of life is this? <laughs> it's very odd. Why do you smell like that? <laughs> And then we'll get to Jamie's stuff. A lot of the characters all culminate to in the final scene, so we'll just oh, yeah, do all the do. scenes. Uh, we'll do uh, Tyrion and Varys. Uh, you know, Varys and Tyrion, they have, Varys is back. This is the first... Uh, nice little Varys scene. Yeah, he's talking about how... No uh, one weeps for spiders. Yeah, he, he lets uh, Tyrion in on the fact that, you know, Cersei knows about your whore, and, you know, don't, you know, underestimate your father. He's never... Every you, threat yeah. he's made, he's always made good. Like, he doesn't just say shit. Yeah, he's got a ship. For, he's not like, he's I'll pull a... this car over right now. You kids don't shut up. <laughs> I will turn around. Uh, yeah, he says he's got a ship ready to go to Pento. She'll have a place to stay and servants and all this. So then Tyrion has to go and tell Shane. He, he basically starts, he white fangs her. We were talking about uh, during the episode. I said uh, Air Bud. Oh, yeah. Is that, I, is that happening in Air Bud? Yeah, there's a part in Air Bud. When they because, trade him. Go on, get out of here. Go to the other team. I know how retarded it is that we're talking about Air Bud, but <laughs> the dog, uh, the dog you're in, retarded, The sir. dog in Air Bud loved vanilla pudding. <laughs> so he put vanilla pudding in the woods, and the dog went to eat it, and he started walking away, and then the dog started following him. He's like, no, get out of here. And he threw the basketball, the basketball that united them together, mm. and it hits like the dog's side, and the dog's like, huh? And he runs away. It's a very sad Wait, scene. Why was the why was this kid doing this to this dog anyway? Because there was some sort of court the the owner of the dog was this clown guy who wanted the dog back because now the dog was popular for playing basketball. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Look, I watched that. So movie. wait, what happens to Bud? Oh, so at the end there's like a big court case and then the the, the dog they have to pick between the they let the dog The decide. dog decides. Yes. And the judge is there. Classic. And then the clown is there. And the clown is like wrapping a newspaper against his hand because in the past he used to hit oh, the dog with a newspaper. Yeah. So Air Bud is like... And then he starts going towards the clown, but it's to rip the newspaper out of his hand. He rips it up and then he runs to the kid. Nice. Very bittersweet. Take anyway. that clown. Is he in all in clown makeup when he's there in court? Yes. What? Yes. That's amazing. This movie is so <laughs> stupid. I have to see... I have to watch this movie, I feel like. <laughs> it's incredible. Oh my God. Sorry Maybe for... Maybe it's tattooed on. <laughs> He's like, I'm tired of applying this makeup every time I have to go to a children's party. I'm just going to get it tattooed. I, I know way too much about Air Bud. That's a bit odd. Man, you are like a master of Air Bud trivia. That dog didn't give a crap about his free throw average. He just loved the game. It's like Shaq. That's what the, that's what the coach says to the kid. Oh, <laughs> you know, this dog doesn't give a crap about his free throw average. No, he doesn't give a rat's behind. Is the, is the he word. says rat's behind? Yes. Nice. Coach's Moving guy. on <laughs> to Game of We should have a whole series about Air Bud movies. <laughs> Because there's quite a few of them, aren't yes, there? There are. <laughs> okay, now we have Stannis stuff. Oh man, things get crispy over there on uh, <laughs> on Dragonstone. Oh yeah, he had a great burning uh, relatives. He burns. Uh, they're sacrificing some people to the uh, to what the God of Fire there. God of Light. The God of Lights. The Lord of Light. Rolor, Rolor, whatever, Rolor. however you say it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, one of them is uh, Stannis's wife's brother. <laughs> sure he was pretty peeved about that nice. and then uh i like davos there he's uh, after the burning um stannis's wife's a fucking maniac first of all she's really scary yeah. and then she's going oh davos isn't that wonderful did you see their souls Ooh -hoo -hoo. and then uh and then he goes yes i'm sure they're very pleased or something what is the line do you remember the line he says it was so funny to me no oh, i don't remember well anyway it was it was <laughs> i found it humorous <laughs> I'm sure it was. A you guys know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> like, uh, she is a maniac just because she's been locked in there. She basically she's having the traits of like someone who's like in solitary confinement for yeah, too exactly. long. Exactly. That's yeah. what happens to prisoners. They start 
Like uh, Charles Bronson in England. Yeah, like you obsess over weird things, and then you th- start thinking weird. It's it's very bizarre. It's nuts. Yeah, she's same... so fucking creepy. And then they have that dinner. It was so weird. Even uh, Melisandre was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, and what, what, was he, what was he eating that he didn't like? Oh, so he just lifts the... It's meat. It's like some kind of meat that he sniffs, and he says the meat's turned. Uh like it's no good anymore. So. She was talking about one time they were starving, and so then he made for her a soup out of books, out of the book because the book binding, the glue in the book binding is made from horses, right? And so he made like a soup out of it because I don't know. So there's like a little backstory there that they because don't really go into because before right before Robert Baratheon became king, right? Um, so they were that was their home, Storm's End. Right. So it was um, under siege, and nothing could get in or out. And so they were like stuck there. They had no food coming in, or you know, they were completely s- surrounded. Everything was cut off. So they were starving to death in there. Mm. And then one of the things that helped them too was that Davos, who was a smuggler by trade, was smuggling things in mm-hmm. to them. Um, but then Stannis still shortened his fingers, as they say, that he removed the first right. uh, joint, like you know, of each finger for smuggling. <laughs> Even yeah. though it saved all of them. Uh, so Melisandre sent to... Uh, to Stannis' daughter. Yeah. I'll just say that. Yeah, to speak with her. Because she, the wife was talking about she's stubborn and all this kind of stuff. And she's afraid for her soul and she needs to be beaten. Yeah. It's like, what the hell's wrong with this woman? And then... Uh, Which would ultimately lead to her being sacrificed, I would think, right? I guess so. Yeah. Uh, we can move on to Joffrey now. A lot of stuff happens with Joffrey, obviously. Uh, the first being that he's at a table receiving gifts from different people. You get introduced to uh, the Tyrell. Yeah, he's father. just like a bumbling goofball. Well, I don't know if he's a goofball. He's just a guy who's a, a complete beta male who's like, you know, women walk all over him. Everyone just walks all over. He's just basically it, doing what he's told to do. Yeah, he's just kind of like a fat, useless person uh, <laughs> with like a s- stupid face. That's what I kept thinking, and then like, and that's basically how his mother treats him. Like when he's after the like the they have the wedding ceremony. She's talking to the 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 grandmother there is talking to Tywin Lannister, mm-hmm. and uh, then her son starts walking up. And he's like, "Oh, hello, mother. not now. I'm talking to Tywin Lannister." You know all this. Yeah, kind of he, stuff. That, I don't even think he gets like one syllable out. He's like, he's like, uh, no, <laughs> no, no. Yep. Yeah, so the gift giving, he gives a cup. Nice big cup. Yeah. Uh, Golden cup. Then it's Tyrion's turn. And during this time, uh, you know, uh, Cersei points out to uh, Tywin mm, who, who the, the whore is. is. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's like, hmm, bring it to my, what did he say? To my, didn't, yeah, he doesn't her, say to my bedchamber? Yeah, have her sent to my chamber. Oh, yeah. Because he's going to question before the Before the ceremony or something. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Which is strange. Tyrion, he offers his gift, which is a book. And as we all know, Tyrion loves to read. He's an avid reader. <laughs> Why? He Look, loves to read. He loves to read. This is a man that loves the written word. Look at me, boy, and tell me what you see. Is that fin- Finding Forrester? No, that's a very that's like the first episode of season one. Oh, I <laughs> thought he, that was Sean Connery in Finding Snow. Forrester. No, uh, so we're talking about books. So after look uh, at me, boy. Imagine Sean Connery as as Tyrion. They use CG to shrink him down. <laughs> It's not even like a good job. They just use like he looks it's squat. Peter Dinklage is. They have both Peter Dinklage and Sean Connery, what? so they just put, or they just superimpose. They just superimpose Sean Connery's head from Hunt for Red October onto Peter Dinklage's body. It's just clips from Red, from and he's just saying lines from from no Hunt for Red October. One ping only, please, Mister Silly. More tea, anyone? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, perfect. Emmy, please. <laughs> Um, so after uh, Tyrion gives his gift, then you have Tywin, who gives his gift, which was the other steel sword. Valerian oh yeah, Joffrey steel. was not enthused by that gift, but he forced some politeness out, by the way, for Tyrion's yes. gift. And uh, then yeah, Tywin brings the the uh, the Valyrian steel sword out, which uh, which was um, funny because everyone else was like, oh, you could see the uh, Marjorie's dad there was like, ah, oh, come on. He was you know he seemed annoyed by that gift because it was like he beat everybody. Yeah, and also, like, you're giving this little Brad, like, something that's, like... Also, you're giving Joffrey, like, one of the sharpest swords in existence. Yeah, give that to, like, an honorable warrior who's proven himself in the battlefield. This or is, someone who waste. won't, like, immediately kill someone at the dinner table yeah, And the it. kid has proven, like, he prefers crossbows. He doesn't like blades. I- I'd say give him, like, a gold crossbow or something. A Valyrian crossbow. He has a golden statue of him holding a crossbow. He loves that crossbow. Yeah, you know, like, I yeah, he doesn't really have his crossbow by a set. Well, he's a bowman. Yeah, really. Yeah, climbed it. One thing I want to say about Joffrey is uh, every movement he makes is done with like this 
rageful like just like picking his face is done with like a quick like like a twitch kind of thing yeah. it seems like he's constantly angry and <laughs> like he has a problem like some sort yeah. of Tourette's it's like he can't hold still and when he does hold still it's like a very tense like look and it's like like you see him at the at the uh, reception basically he's watching the musicians and there's just this like ro- revolving shot around Joffrey and he's just like intensely watching his brow is the always musicians. just like and you just immediately feel this tension and uh, you become so nervous because that's what th- that kid is probably one of the best actors in the entire show because not anymore well no but no, I'm saying, not for anymore purpose, forever he said he's done acting after oh this. i know i know yeah i know we, you yeah, know, i wanted to talk about that that was his last he just nods his head yeah makes a fake tear for the well one of the most hateful detestable fictional that kid characters did such an amazing time. job i know with the show. i mean can you imagine if it i was think as i was watching this for the second time before we started recording uh i was thinking my god i can't imagine like i wonder what it would be like if it wasn't this kid doing it, you know what I mean? If somebody else was playing him a little bit differently, yeah. like it would change everything. The one reason it works so well, the show is because this kid managed to pull this psycho off mm. and it's so believable. Every time I just see him on the screen, I become nervous. Yeah. You know, my heart was just racing every scene he was in. Yeah. It's well, crazy. Talking, watch season one again. And you see like how, what a like small kid he was and like, yeah. like what he got into. Like he, re- like you can see the progression. Yeah, like it was. It was. It's really amazing. Yeah. So I'm. I'm hoping that's just something like he said. Like, oh, I'm never gonna act again. I'm hey, hoping. But apparently, he's like, uh, uh, isn't he like super brilliant? That kid in real life. He seems like it. I think he is. I think he's incredibly smart. He seems smarter than I am. And, uh, I'll tell you that well, right now. <laughs> that's easy. That's one reason why. There's no I stress hate him. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been stalking him recently. <laughs> I follow his every move. Right. He's really smart because he spots me every time, and I am. I thought I was pretty good at stalking, but he always catches just me. Just walking right in front of him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> just standing in front of him, breathing through my mouth very heavily, <laughs> staring at him. Uh, and then after that, we move on to... Um... It was Bran. We'll come back to Joffrey. Yeah. It was we a Bran, Bran scene, and this was which was really the, good. This might be... Well, it's not my favorite part, but it's like the coolest montage of the show, I think, when he touches the weirwood tree, and he has all these visions of either what's what has happened, what's going to happen... And uh, well, it's both because you see him because you see him falling from the you hear Cersei saying like he saw us and him falling. And you see Eddard and then you see the dragon flying over King's Landing. You see a dragon shadow flying over King's Landing. So it's like a mix of both. Couldn't that be like a past vision like that had happened? Oh, it could have been. Yeah, absolutely. And then you see like the, you know, the Iron Throne and the whole courtroom just drenched in ash. Oh, see, was that ash? I okay, think that was my Ash. first. Oh, it could have been. I thought it was snow because winter is coming. That's true. And okay. so I thought, like, okay, like King's Landing. I but you, I didn't even think of that because it could have easily been Ash, and that makes almost more sense. It's more logical, especially since you have the dragon flying that, over. Yeah, that's just. But, but no, what I thought was snow. like, okay, something has happened in King's Landing. It's like the roof has been destroyed, and winter is coming, and so snow is yeah. falling in. I just down think on it's Ash because throne. when you see you know, you're, snow, it, yeah, it's such a specific thing. This was like a very gray, toned down. Yeah, no, and it you're right. Extremely fine. So I was just imagining like the city is completely burned, and like, or like maybe it was a vision of what could have happened if the Targaryen king had burned the city. If Jamie didn't kill him. Yeah, yeah something if like Ares, that. Uh, Harris Targaryen. There's no solid answer there, but it's a lot of cool. No, you're probably right. Now I feel stupid for not even thinking about that. My first thought was that winter is coming, and then because I was thinking that because they are in the snow, then you see Ned Stark, and uh, the Starks' winter is coming, and then I just for some reason I thought it was snow falling. But that was a really cool moment. And then you hear a voice saying, "You know, find me under the tree," yeah. um, and then you see like a figure like a shaggy figure in the, in the snowy forest, like start to turn around and then it cuts. You see I think the that, was a, tree. that was a shot from the very first season where the very first scene where, um, you know, the guy Ned Stark beheads when he's in the woods. I think memory sees that little girl who slowly turns around. I th- wasn't that, that shot. Remember the girl with the dead eyes. Mm, I can't remember that. I think that I was that. that. And again. I think the shot, remember all the crows were flying at the screen. I think that was after when Sam and Gilly were running away and those were the crows. Oh, right. Them. Right. Yeah. Th- that could have been. But, I, I well, I think I know. See, I don't know. I know you're not done with Dance of Dragons either. Right. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, I think because I, I had an idea of what it was, but I can't even talk to you about it because I don't even think you've gotten there. We'll do our spoiler episode. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> so I'm just so tempted to splurt things out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, prior to that, uh, wire weirwood uh, tree scene, uh, you, you had this scene with Bran who was warging into uh, summer. summer summer skin. And apparently, so warging, you don't control the animal, right? It's basically no, you. Uh, mm, because oh. why would they have a problem getting food if they have this wolf who's able to hunt things? And well, I don't you... think that. Yeah, I guess they do allude that they have a problem because they said that they're all hungry. I don't know because the other warger that was with Jon Snow when he was with the wildlings, the one that he killed, and he was like, "You were right the whole time." Well, I'm uh, just, but that was an he... experienced warger. Like he's been doing it for a long right. time. Brand so, is but just he was it. he controlling? My question is though, was he controlling his like that hawk? I would think... Or was he just... To me, that scene says, yes, I'm about to die, so I'm going to work into the hawk, become the hawk, and attack. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So I would think You're that absolutely guy, right. That and that does happen. That's confirmed, because that happens in the book when Jon Snow joins that group, that wildling yeah. group in the beginning. That Like, that out, like that uh, hawk or whatever it is, like, attacks him and, like, slashes his face open pretty yeah. nasty. And also remember, like, when Hordor was going nuts, he warged into Hodor and was yeah. able to bring you're right. him, calm him down. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, like, is it tougher on the wolf? Because I don't see why they would have trouble getting food. You just no, I don't think it, it's not tough it? on the wolf because there's a link. There's a link between them. So why are they starving? I don't think they are starving. He's eating. He's like, here, here's some food. No, but they were all saying like, oh, like I'm hungry. Like we're all hungry. Like why are you hungry? Get your wolf and get out there, hunt some stuff, and bring back some meat. I guess I don't know. I don't know. Are you telling me the show has messed up? Oh God, are you kidding me? All right. Anyway, These reviews are over. I'm closing the YouTube account <laughs> tomorrow. Boycotting George Martin. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, was there any other thing before we get to the wedding? Mm, no. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff to talk about at the wedding. One is one of my favorite parts of this episode was uh, the prince from Doran, Prince Oberyn. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, those people are oversexed. Yeah. Well, they are insatiable. I love their... So, like, you see, they, they after the wedding ceremony, uh, which is quick and like you see joffrey even when he's gonna kiss his like now wife to seal the deal he's just so creepy even there he's like yeah. and now with this kiss and all this stuff and just when he's moving in to kiss her i was like wow this guy's a fucking creepo <laughs> and then yeah <laughs> always declaring as every move and so then you see um you know all the festivities going on there's a lot yeah. of fire happening you know fire tricks and uh kind of carnival style uh amusements yeah, and um, you see, one is like a contortionist girl, and she's got her like legs bent over her. Well, she's head, the one. Remember, she's doing who, a split. Who knows the uh, Dornish knot? Is that the Mirish knot? Mirish is that knot. the one? Yeah, I th- she's... Miranese knot. Oh, okay, Miranese knot. Yeah, that's the one when they send Pod in, and he's, he starts bringing out the whores, and she's the one who bends forward. Oh, okay. I guess that's like her only trick. <laughs> she can only bend that way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's it and you just look at her you don't engage her sexually in any way you just look at it <laughs> wow and, and you... well that's basically what prince Overin does in his his woman right. they just basically they're like oh wow you look at this place oh here we go let's take a look and they just stop and they're just staring at her crotch yeah it's so funny what i love about um what was that the other was that a wedding or uh when uh, uh sansa and and uh and joffrey they had their little party remember and then uh cersei was gonna mar- is marrying loras this was last season. That was at that was at Sansa's wedding, right? Okay. Yeah. What I love about the weddings at King's Landing because you have so, such a concentration of characters there, you get to see these characters who never interacted before, kind of like bounce off each other. Oh yeah. So you you, you know you see uh, Loras talking to Jamie, which was that was awesome. Yeah, you see they're uh, like laughing first, and then Jamie's suddenly saying like, "Hey, you're gonna you're gonna marry my sister? She's gonna kill you in your sleep." You have a and baby, she, she's going to kill the baby. Yeah, before he even takes his first breath. Yeah, and then he's like, you'll never marry her. And Loris is just, just goes, neither will you, yeah. and walks away. And it's so funny because I don't think he would have ever said anything like that if Jamie had his right hand still. He would have never said anything he's like He's been, like, neutered, basically. Yeah. Yes, boss? I thought that he said, like, uh, he, Jamie said, she'll never marry you. And then he said, neither will you. Like... JV won't marry Sir Loris. Nope. No. Yeah. <laughs> Incorrect. We'll listen, listen to it again. No, there's no need. I saw it twice. That's not what he says. <laughs> he says he says he says you will never marry her. Uh and then he says, Neither will you. Why would they I'm pretty sure that they're not going to <laughs> not at this point sense to make me. such I, a writing writing blunder like that. No. All of a sudden Tyrion gets up and he's like, Hey, this win ain't no good. 
Here's a little thing about the wedding, though, before we get into it. In the book, when I was reading the red, the purple wedding, as it's known, boss, it's, this it is, is the purple it is wedding. It is the purple wedding. Well, now, where do these weddings get their names? Because I don't. Does anyone in the book ever refer to the wedding as a color? Um, or is that just the I believe that they do. They I believe do? that after the fact, they become known as these things. I think, oh, okay. and like the red wedding is, I think, just because it's so bloody. But someone um, in the book. Refer, like a character in the book said, "Oh, at the w- red wedding, I can't remember." Yeah, no, I, no, it's not just that people come up with these on their own. Okay. Uh, these are in the book. These terms. Okay, I'm wow. pretty okay. sure. All right, I'm pretty sure. Definitely the red wedding. I don't know. Now I'm second guessing myself. I thought they were in the books. No, they have to. And be, I right? thought it was the purple wedding because yeah, they definitely <laughs> are because uh, you know then Joffrey turns you know because of the poison because he turns purple. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, anyway, when I read that purple wedding in the book, I. S- for some reason, in my imagination, I saw it all being indoors. Oh, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I Absolutely. was imagining—I was imagining like a long table, and then Joffrey's like over there, and then Tyrion was like I on imagine... his, to his right with certain, like, yeah, t- like Joffrey was here, and to his right and left were huge long tables going straight down, and in the middle, Joffrey was bringing out these different shows. I to, imagine uh, it the same way. Like he's he's like up like stairs and he's like above everybody but it's like a long table with all like him his wife and like all their family members on each side and then down a little bit like in the center of this room there's like a space but then there's all tables where everyone else is sitting i imagine the same way and it was the same way i imagined the red wedding i basically had the same venue in my mind at every wedding every wedding in a medieval Uh, setting i always imagine the same way yeah because i imagine that the red like when the red wedding happened i imagine that that room was so much bigger than it was in the thing because there's also other characters there like whatever happened in the show you remember the great john the great john yeah the guy that was one of rob stark's bannermen who uh, was like against him at first, and the wolf like attacks him, and he like loses yes. a finger or two. And then in the books, he's like an important bannerman for 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 Rob Stark. But then at some point, he just kind of like disappears. And he was at the red wedding, and like all of his men are there. I thought it was much larger to do. And then outside the phrase, outside the twins, there's like the, all the armies, which they did show that very well. Right. But uh, I thought it was a much larger venue. Yeah. For the red wedding, and there were a lot of people there because you had the great you know, John there is, who was it, getting shit faced. Because and the then, book is such a like complicated mishmash. There's so, so many, different many things. characters. Like it's in the all, book. it's basically it's like you're reading a history book that has like you know a genius yeah. like putting in like creative elements. So I think for the show they take okay this guy great John what can we use him for okay let's have a scene where like he questions Rob because he kind of does that in the book yeah and then the wolf bites like his 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 finger. And then that's pretty much it. And then maybe later on, a writer was like, "Oh, I like that character. I'll bring him in for this scene to do something similar." And yeah. then after he's done, you're kind of done because you have now you have to deal with so many other characters. Yeah, it's probably they, if they, I mean, if they had to, if they tried to put all of these characters in, people would lose their minds and they would have no idea what the they hell was like, going the on. Writers, would... because they're so the writers would lose their minds. The audience would have no fucking idea what was happening. But anyway, we're digressing here. You need yeah. No, but it's true. It's so complicated yeah. to do. That's why it's so impressive and why it's so fun to talk about. Because I imagine myself as a writer on the show. You need some guy on who knows everything, who's like the head writer, who's going to like organize it all. Then you need people who are good writers to do like who know a certain like, character, who yeah. knows how to make them interact. And then let's say you have scenes later on where like two characters who have never met, those two writers need to get together and be, okay, I wrote this character doing this and it had to do with... It's so these, complicated. These guys basically they know these books inside and out. Like you have I can't to. imagine knowing as much about these this, books you have as to they live do. It. You yeah. have to live it. Oh god, like, they this must has to be, be insane. Like, like, feel, they must be horribly depressed. No, this is, if the if you have passion for it, I like guess. The, like Peter no, but Jackson, I'm just saying like the subject because it's so bleak and dark and that's depressing. True. That's what I mean. Not because depressed because they hate doing it. Right, right. I right. mean be depressed because the subject matter is so damn dark. Well, that's why, you know, you're throwing these little goofy little jokes and jo- Like this scene where uh, oh, yes. <laughs> Oberyn is Oberyn. looking at Loras and then starts sucking his uh, female lover's fingers as he's looking at Loras. And then Loras is just raises his glass and smiles <laughs> like, like, oh, oh yeah, later, later buddy. Yes. They were, uh, that was hilarious. And then, uh, oh, and then let's, I want to lead into that, have uh, lead into when uh, Oberyn and um, and uh, they, they meet up with Tywin and Cersei. Oh, my God. That was an awesome... That was a great scene. Yes. I thought... Because like, they're just you, basically like, shitting on each other the entire... Like, insulting each other. That's another example other. of two characters you'd never think would meet. Like, Tywin, Cersei meeting Oberyn. Yeah. You know what I mean? And his... So, the, like, his... I guess it's his wife or his mistress, whatever. They're... I can't remember from the book what it is even, but... Uh, if she's even a character, but... 
you know, she's a bastard. And so they're saying how, oh, well, you know, this is how, we, I, uh, this is how I remember Oberyn. Uh, there's a scene, they have a confrontation scene in the last episode. In the book, uh, Tyrion goes out riding with Oberyn in, into a field, mm. and he starts talking about, you know, their past history. He basically, you know, he says, like, this is how you, you know, wronged us and this and that. But, yeah. Uh, basically, they do kind of create like a friendship. They, they, yeah, they bond. Yeah, but in the show, they haven't. I think in the next episode, they're probably going to show a bonding scene. They haven't really done that yet. I don't think Tyrion. No, right. I mean they've had an encounter, obviously, as we yeah. saw, but it wasn't a very positive one, right. um, because it just reinforced. It just showed you how much Oberyn hates Lannisters, right. and uh, you know. So I mean, that that was all that was done there. I mean. Yeah, next episode, I think they're going to show yeah. something else there, but. Uh, Oh, one thing we didn't mention. This was written by... Is this the episode that was George Martin? I'm pretty sure. Oh, shit. Well, there you go. Man, it's, it's so amazing how the episodes that he writes are always the greatest ones. Yes, this episode written by George R. R. Martin. Oh, and shit. Isn't that's it awesome. Ama- I always feel like our discussions are better when it's written by George Martin for some reason. Like, yeah. Well, because there's, there's just so much... You know what? There's so subconsciously much... Subconsciously, you're watching, and there's so much more happening. The writing is just that much crisper. The writing, in general, is fantastic. Yeah, and but then... you can tell, like... When it's George Martin writing it, you tune into it perfectly. I said it before in a past review. It's like his hand's coming out of the screen, yeah. grabbing your brain and, like, pulling you <laughs> in. It's like it's like you're reading the books again, yeah. and, like, you just get so into it. All right, so, Joffrey at his wedding. Oh, man. What starts to happen here is uh, Joffrey, you know, in the book, he was getting a little drunk. They didn't show that too much here. They showed him drinking. You could tell he was a little... You showed him drinking because he was, when he was laughing, he's like spitting wine up. He's getting yeah. a little sloppy. And, uh, you know, he brings out his fool, who uh, we met last uh, episode. Dentos. Uh, he's wearing his goofy hat and everything. He's juggling. He drops the hat. And I said, where were we watching, like, uh, entertainment back then was... Uh, <laughs> pretty poor <laughs> like this is entertainment a guy watching a drunk try and juggle actually i mean that could be hilarious <laughs> well we didn't like, see enough of it i like think. in a two minute youtube clip it's hilarious but at a at your wedding <laughs> and he's doing it for like 20 minutes I can look understand. i'm gonna have my drunk grandfather try and juggle at my wedding <laughs> the other thing i want to ask do you have any idea what the hell that instrument is called they were playing before. It was like some kind of the medieval radio medieval head, I accordion. Yeah, they sat, it did sound like an old radio, like a medieval Radiohead song. <laughs> that was a depressing song. It basically looked like the like a thing you would like blow on a fire. It's you know, look, one of those like giant tabletop, things, or like at a blacksmith thing, yeah, like, like that a giant thing. tabletop accordion. Yeah, that's basically. And he, I think he had like a small one. Yeah, that's right. In his so, hands, yeah, the, the hand one guy had one. that. Then the other two were like manipulating this mechanism that went up and down and like pushed air through these kind of pipes yeah, or that something that definitely has a name did you ever see that little video the guy recreated an instrument that uh leonardo da vinci just drew no. up in sketches leonardo da vinci he designed this instrument that worked in this <laughs> peculiar way you would pedal it and Whoa. something and so a guy saw the sketch he analyzed it and he made it and it works just based off it, Leonardo... Does it sound Leonardo, terrible, or... It sounds it sound, cool. Yeah? It sound, it's like something you never heard before. It's like a new instrument. It's wow. so bizarre. That's weird. Yeah, look that up. What's it called? Do you know? No, I don't know. Uh, I saw this video years ago. I was just fascinated because I was like... Oh, you you're, way ahead of the, you're way ahead of the curve on DaVinci News. <laughs> well, it's... Up-to-date DaVinci bulletins yeah, brought to you by Oxnard. DaVinci News from when? Right. DaVinci! How, how many... DaVinci lives! <laughs> All right, so now uh, Joffrey, he's obviously getting bored. He starts throwing coins at the musicians. He's, yeah. You know, the jugglers pissing him off. Joffrey's getting like, cranky. Knock his hat off, whatever. And he's like, and so apparently Joffrey, behind the scenes, arranged. Now, how involved do you think Joffrey was in the production of this little little person show? Not involved. He probably scared the shit out of whoever was involved and was like, I want this to be this, this way. And he basically gave the quick... Th- Thing. I, like reenact this. I want it to be, you know, funny and, and, and I all love stuff. His and then speech before it happens, he's basically telling everyone, "I don't want anyone to have a good time at my wedding. <laughs> a wedding is supposed to be a historical event. It's like you should all be angry and annoyed that you're here." Yeah. Oh man. And so they bring out th- in the book, bring out the dwarves. Uh, my heart was racing. I remember when I read this in the book because my fear is like something horrible is going to happen to a character I love. At no point did I ever think something bad was going to happen to Joffrey. Oh, yeah, no, me either. And, I'm shocked. Uh, and so they bring out, you know, these little people, you know, and so, and the whole time, like, Joffrey's always, like, looking at Tyrion. Yeah. And it's, like... You're just waiting for, oh, God, so this is going to be bad. It's so uncomfortable, and then, like, he's insulting everyone, like, Loras... He has uh, King Renly <laughs> riding on top of a puppet um, of Loras. Yeah, it's hilarious. He has... Uh, 
Loris gets pissed. He, you see in the show, he like gets up and like storms yeah, off. Yeah. Then uh, the the little person who's playing Joffrey starts humping like a the, wolf the head. The wolf head. Yeah. And, you know, cut the Sansa just like. Everyone's get, every, nobody like few people are amused. You see, Varys is not amused. Well, they keep uh, the cutting to that one table. Tyrell is not amused. They keep cutting to that one table. The guy who's like wearing blue is always like, <laughs> like who's <laughs> yeah, that, that guy? guy? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is that guy? <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's just funny, so, he's just a patron enjoying the show, man. <laughs> hey, I was invited by a friend. I don't know what the hell this is. Yeah, he's well, like, hey, I never met these people, but I gotta say, this is one of the best weddings I've ever been to. Oh, what are they gonna do next? A lot, too. Yeah. It's like two or three shows. Is he at Varys's table? I believe, yeah. I okay, because I like and Varys, Varys is annoyed because Varys gets like bonked on the head by the guy's <laughs> foam hammer in the beginning, and you see Varys like makes this face that is hilarious. Yeah, there, there he is. is. There oh he is. yeah, there he is. Yeah. Oh, in front of Maester Pycelle. Oh, Maester okay. Pycelle's enjoying it too. Man, so there's important people at that table. Who's that guy in the blue? He's just probably <laughs> some rich guy. Is that the director? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember the director's name. It's Alex Graves. Oh, which good. Is very. Good. The, uh, yeah. You know, very fitting. <laughs> that's true um one thing i wanted to mention if you haven't read the books what you're missing out on these wedding scenes are the delicious descriptions of all the foods oh they God. put out every course george martin he writes like three pages of and like it's the tiniest font you've ever tried to read yeah. crammed in on these enormous on like this huge page and, I'm not kidding, it's, and it's like, like all every, just food every course like the first course was given it was nuts roasted and goose fat Sprinkled with this and that, with pine nuts and curry and mold like... wine, mold spiced yeah, wine, and, a... and uh, I'm telling you, reading those books, you gain weight because after you're done reading a chapter, <laughs> you're like, I, I feel like a snack. Or also, something. you just basically sit there for days. Finish. I think I said this them. before, but I once read a chapter. There, people were like starving in the woods, and then he, they had to like get acorns and, and catch squirrels, and they made a stew. Even the description of that made me hungry. <laughs> he was like. They roasted the squirrel flesh in the oils of the acorns as it boiled over the fire. I was like, oh, like, man, man, that sounds pretty good, actually. I wonder if George Martin, like, he's like, all right, I'm saying some pretty crazy, I'm getting some crazy recipes out here. Maybe I should try some of this first. Well, there's a lot of uh, Game of Thrones cookbooks. Oh, is there really? Yeah. Oh, we should try some of that. And, uh, <laughs> but never, never have, like, a Game of Thrones themed wedding. That's all I'm going to oh, say. Oh, God, no. That's not a good idea. God, no. <laughs> <laughs> they don't end well. <laughs> Weddings never go well. Anyway, this. so they're either happening. It's either people are getting married who don't want to be married to each other, or they're getting married, but like one of them was supposed to marry the other one's sister or something, but they died tragically. Yeah. It's always like a depressing circumstances, or then somebody dies, mm -hmm. is, is murdered. <laughs> but then the history books probably tell it different. That's why Sansa is like, oh, well, she wants to be a princess, this and that. Yeah. Probably every single wedding in Westeros has been this horrible. Rape or murder fest. Anyway, so we get, I love all the cuts we get to Varys, just looking in disgust. You, you see old lady uh, Tyrell. Yeah, Everyone is just, just yeah, People are storming off. Tyrion and uh, Sansa are just like, kind of like, oh man, this is not good. And then Joffrey uh, basically is like, oh, what a fine, you know, here's your purse, the champion's purse, but wait, there's somebody else who might want to take the throne from me. But, hold on. And then uh, I like how Tyrion goes, like, you know, give them 20 gold each. Oh, yeah. Done. Yeah, during the show. Yeah. And then, uh, so then Joffrey's, like, basically trying to coax Tyrion into joining and getting down there and finding him to, like, embarrass him. And also, he thinks it would be hilarious. Mm. So then Tyrion's basically saying how, oh, one taste of combat was enough for me. I'd like to keep the rest of my face. And, uh, oh, I was an eyewitness. Why don't you go down? This is a poor uh, portrayal of what you did at the battle. I was there. I saw what you did. You know what I mean? And, like, you cunning, should go down there and do it, you know? cunning linguist. Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, quite a master debater. Austin Powers jokes from 1993. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, oh, I like the little moment here where Sansa picks up the cup for Tyrion. They yeah. do have their like. I remember last season there was a moment where they were kind of talking to each other and they're kind of like laughing. Yeah. Then she leaves him. Yeah. <laughs> but, Two, several just a few moments later she leaves. Yeah, but there's um, a. I think she. She's depressed, but she recognizes that Tyrion is not the one who's causing her all these problems. She may have even just realized it here because she sees how Joffrey torments Tyrion. Absolutely, you know, yeah. and they, they keep they have these shots of where they're looking at each other, like, you know, she. I think she, you know she recognizes in these moments, like, oh man, yeah, we're in the like same you boat here. You would obviously notice if you have a shared hatred of someone, even if you don't openly speak about it. Yeah, um, and but, also I like uh, Brienne comes up and you know gives her. Regards. And oh yeah, Joffrey's like, you're the one who, who uh, stabbed Renly. 
you know, moving around with his head. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. You let it very fidgety. Yeah. It's like, oh, I would have loved to meet the man who killed that deviant. Yeah. Ran a sword to that deviant. Yeah. He's the deviant. He's like Hannibal Lecter like sometimes. Well, Joffrey I told you, he this. based his performance off of uh, Joaquin Phoenix and Gladiator. Oh, Remember? very good. Yeah. yeah. What a great per- what a great performance that was, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, that works. And then uh, Cersei and, uh, uh, confronts Brienne. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. You bowed. You didn't curtsy and all that kind of stuff. No, that, funny. but also... Oh, like, then later like, after that, yeah. yeah, we're talking about Jamie, and she basically says, well, don't you love... Don't you love Jamie? Uh, and then just kind of, like, pauses, and then she's like, goodbye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Walks away. Like oh, man. Uh, we're just watching in the background, but Joffrey cuts open the pigeon pie. This is after this intense sequence where Joffrey goes up... And so, you know, after what he's having saying, this, so now he's having the, oh yeah, we were, so we were talking about getting Tyrion to go perform with the people, with the uh, other dwarves. And, um, there's like this super intense, basically this entire wedding scene, <laughs> my heart was just pounding out of my chest. I thought I was going to pass out because I was yeah. so nervous and anxious because I obviously knew what was going to happen. Uh, cause you know, you and I read these books already, but I was, it was so intense I like couldn't. I almost couldn't take it anymore. Boss is shaking his head, but no, you like we know Mike what's going to happen. Head. But there might they might change a little something about it. You know what I'm saying? All right. That's what it is. Because no, I was just like, "Way nervous." You know what's going to happen, but that makes sense. Weren't you nervous when you were watching? Well, I don't know what's going to happen. But it's still <laughs> yeah, so but intense. That, I don't understand. I, I still feel nervous. Why, are you, why am I enjoying the show? I already know the story. <laughs> yeah. Why am I even watching it? I guess I don't know. <laughs> How dare you have a, uh, empathy and emotion? Yeah, actually. what is wrong, what with, wrong with feeling it? something? <laughs> God, you pansy. Uh, yeah, but and then um, everyone goes quiet as Joffrey slowly pours the wine. <laughs> I like Tyrion goes, hmm, excellent vintage. Oh, it's a man. shame that you spilled it. And then uh, he says all the stuff to it, and then he's saying, "Oh, you'll be my new cupbearer." And then he, Tyrion's like, "Oh, what an you know what an honor you know you do me." This it's is great. why, like, and he goes, "It's not meant to be an honor." He's getting so pissed off, Joffrey. Things like the Oculus Rift, the you know the the virtual reality headset, or like oh, yeah. you know in Star Trek where you go into the holodeck. All I would yeah. do with stuff like that is just go like, "I want to be just a guy in the back table." I want to be punished by Joffrey. No, no, no. I want to be a guy at the back table at the purple wedding. And just, I want to like, be the clapping guy in the yeah, blue. Yeah, like I just want to be like not a guy <laughs> who dies. I just want to be there to like experience it and like or like just great parts of different books where I can just be a guy who's in the background just to watch it. Wouldn't you want to be like the hound though too? Like in last episode? No, because I, no. I would I would rather just Pun- sit and like watch. stabbing a guy in the dick. No, I don't want to see. I don't want stabbing move. a guy's face <laughs> on his own knife. I would view it as like a movie experience, like watching Gravity or something. Yeah. I want to feel like I'm in space, but I don't want to have to actually be Sandra Bullock trying to grab for a cord or something. You'll definitely throw up. I think there was a thing on the radio about it recently. About they were talking about that very thing and the guy who was like the CEO of that company, and they were talking about how Oculus Rift. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they were just bugged by trying Facebook it, and or how it, it it really makes you you know it's a huge adjustment. The guy who was trying at the time he had to stop because he was so nauseous. Um, I can see that. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's I don't a think big it would adjustment. bother me. I'm pretty good with. Um, I think it's going to be uh, distortions. And yeah. Stuff. yeah, like when we've Motion, gotten to see no. 3D stuff and even just IMAX. Yeah, there was a period of adjustment for me in the very beginning, like the first ten minutes. I'm just like, whoa. Oh, when I bit, saw like... the Dark Knight Rises, it was in this IMAX dome theater. Yeah. Not a good idea. It was <laughs> too big. Yeah, like, uh, that's what happened with me with the Dark Knight. One side of the movie was happening over here. Like, literally, I had to turn my neck 90 degrees yeah. to look at this side of the theater. And, but the scenes were like he's riding on his bike, and you see those shots of, like, first-person perspective, like, flying through the city and stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, that's what that's meant for. It's yeah. not... I don't think a narrative works too no, well. No, you have to have a good seat if you go down. Because that happened to me when I saw The Dark Knight, and it was, like, not a good experience because I was it was packed, and so I was down, like, in a corner. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, like, kind of, like, looking up, like, at this weird angle of the screen. Yeah. Then I saw The Watchmen in IMAX, and I got there, like, super early and uh you so be, like back like, in the middle yeah i was in the middle it was like a it was a great seat but then i was sitting next to this guy with his little kids while uh watching watchmen <laughs> watching watchmen <laughs> while night owl and uh what's her face are fucking in uh <laughs> in archie there oh, oh my god well they're floating in archimedes they're floating while hallelujah is playing oh, and i'm sitting next to this sitting next to this guy his little kids it was horrible daddy what does that mean shut up Shut up and praise the Lord, you little shit! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> so they then they bring out the case. There's this Big super. Pie. There's this incredible tension. Then all of a sudden, Marjorie breaks the silence. Yeah. Oh, the pie is here. <laughs> and then, uh... I, oh, by the way, I wanted to say she 
she has to be a genius to have not been hurt by him, to have been manipulated in any way by him. She plays him. She has to be like she's a very good manipulator herself. That's why she has to be a better manipulator than he is. But also, it's almost like Gandalf. Like Gandalf manipulates people, but he has a good heart. <laughs> yeah. But he so that's she's playing this game against him and like. Yeah. Also, there is a difference between uh, between how Joffrey looks at her than how he looked at Sansa right from the beginning. Right. Like there is. More There's no of sense like, of like I've dominated you. Of like, ownership. Yes. Also, yeah, exactly. There's not that domination. Uh, yeah, that was like established immediately somehow. So so you don't sense that. But then she announces that the pie is here, and then I was thinking to, I had the same thought in the book. So. You know, he cuts open the pie. First of all, when they cut back to the pie, after these doves fly out of it, you see a bunch of dead ones in there that he hacked up when Joffrey cut it up. But then also, I was like, why are people eating this pie that birds have been sitting in and shitting in and everything? It's, like, disgusting. It's true. It's gross. You think about that? Isn't that, like, an old, like, uh, fairy tale or some kid song? Like some... Eat the pigeon pie, it's full of pigeon poop, and you have no, to eat there it. No, isn't like he baked the pie of crows and they flew out? Tom Thumb. Right. Isn't There's that Tom some... Thumb? No, Tom Thumb, he put his thumb in a pie and pulled out a plum. Right. Oh, I thought something with crows was oh, involved was with Tom, 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 Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb. Rub-a-dub-dub, three men in a tub? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which is a weird one. Loris. <laughs> Loris. <laughs> I never thought Lor- of that. I never thought of that oh either. <laughs> I think what? Sir Loris likes that one a lot. Um, Sir Loris, well, Prince so Oberyn, and uh, that. little Jack Horner sat in a corner. Watching his, the men in the tub. <laughs> eating his curds and whey. The men in the tub wanted to give him a rub. <laughs> and so... And so he screamed and ran away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, man. What the... Rub-a-dub-dub, three men in a tub. <laughs> what right? the fuck is going on when here? I was a kid, oh, that made so much goodness. sense. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was with them. You didn't think twice about it. You're like, oh, I like tubs. Oh, uh, three people can fit. That's fun. Three whole men. <laughs> How efficient. Wow. Yeah. Big tub. There must uh, be bubbles and the toys. Inno- innocence of youth. As <laughs> the world. I think we might have out. all been molested as children. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think yeah, we have yeah, yeah. some seriously repressed memories. <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah. rub a tub, tub. Isn't that right, Dexter? Three men in a tub. <laughs> Oh, no. oh boy! Whoa, yay! So, tell us nursery rhymes. Tell us what that nursery rhyme. I know there's a nursery rhyme where they cut a cake and doves fly out. From Game of Thrones or in From the real world? The real world. I remember that as a kid. Mm. They cut a cake and something fly or crows fly out. Oh, baked as king a pie. He's got it. Someone will say it anyway. Joffrey's getting. Super <laughs> I think you're onto something there, though. This is a very dry. Uh, this cake. pie is dry. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He starts chomping down. And, uh, he's really he's, enjoying this pigeon he's, pie. He's uh, told Tyrion that he wants him to be his cup bearer. Yeah. So uh, here's the thing about this. A lot of shots going on here. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people here who have a very good incentive to want this guy dead. Oh, yeah. You know, Cersei's picking up the cup. Tyrion well, I certainly cup. don't think that she wants him dead. Then there's another cup. You see, you know, Lady Ty- old Lady Tyrell there is looking at the cup. There's then- a lot of shots... You know, also like of eyes between Tyrion and Tyrion even says after well, you mentioned before, make sure that these, you know, you pay these guys, the dwarves, he means the 20 gold pieces mm-hmm. each. And he's like, we'll have to think of another, uh, you know, thing for Joffrey. Right. Uh, Everyone's just saying mm-hmm. stuff. Even uh, even just like uh, old lady Tyrell, uh, her son, the bald guy, Marjorie's dad. Putting like oh a big yeah cup, fat guy like the big cup in yeah front of him. Like, oh I know I wanted to scream like because I was watching with my fiance and I was just like oh man that's foreshadowing <laughs> do I you was get gonna it? say she'd be like what <laughs> she's like oh, so we sound she's like idiots chicken. we sound like idiots squawk oh that's foreshadowing <laughs> Archie <laughs> uh, and then you're always watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> hey, shut up, idiot. I'm sitting in my chair, meathead. <laughs> And then remember there was that scene last season where, um, remember we had our little secret episode about it, our spoiler episode, where mm-hmm. Bronn and Tyrion were talking, and then he's pouring the cup, and someone says something that kind of implies a future poison. Oh like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Happening. There's a lot of stuff going on. They've thrown that kind of stuff for people who read the book, so that you know nerds have something to talk about besides yeah. like what the weather is like. Um, <laughs> what is the weather like, by the way? <laughs> the blood cool. moon tonight. Ooh, blood moon. I'm gonna get my Wiccan sisters. The first of four lunar eclipses. Whoa. Hope for a good harvest. It's not evil. Man. 
This guy's some th- some facts are coming out about Oxnard. Tonight. <laughs> That's why he always Ru- wears black. <laughs> Favorite nursery rhyme: Rub a dub dub, three men in a tub. <laughs> Always wearing black. Yeah, clearly that's the that's a witch's favorite nursery rhyme. That's true, right? I always wear black. Isn't and that, witches isn't that just weird? wear one outfit. Yeah, too, wear all colors. The time. And he's always he always he's, he carries a guitar around. He's got his like hair in a big. Pompadour. I don't know how to play it. So I just yeah. keep it on my bed. It's just for the look for the yeah. ladies. And then every time it's just like, oh hey Oxnard, how you doing? And he goes, maybe I'm going to a funeral. Then I tip my fedora. I'm like, Whoa, okay. Tip my fedora, scratch my neck beard, and then add another fifty pounds. You slick your ponytail. Yeah, just by the way, I look nothing like that. These guys are just being Oh, awesome. yeah. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, sure. You look nothing like that, whatever you say. It goes all the way down to his oh, ass. God. Can you imagine if I was like... Oh, it's rarely guy? washed. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's pretty ratty. It's, it's pretty thin. Yeah, it's thin. Oh, yeah. It's th- those, yeah, it's real thin. Yeah, it's and he's thin. pretty much got it like a... He's pretty much bald on the top, <laughs> and he's just yeah. he's just clinging to this disgusting ponytail. He put tried to put bells in it like Carl Drogo the one time, like Carl Drogo. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping for a, for a Khaleesi of my own. Yeah, he just like walks around like the... He just walks around town whipping this bell ponytail around. Yeah. He's like looking, oh, hey, how are you? Uh, could you be my Khaleesi? <laughs> Are you my sun and stars? And then they <laughs> sp- spray mace in his face and run away. Right. And then I made eye contact with a girl for two seconds. But turned out up. she was a cop. No, she did not a- like it. She looked away, so that me- meant I was friend zoned immediately. So oh, I, I thought oh zone. yeah, well that all oh, that or that means you got to take it by force, right? Call style. Well, yeah. because men are better than women, and this and I'm trying to. What's every stereotype? If you're a horse lord, you are. wearing shithead. Oh no, you're I'm basically you're basically Cal Drogo now. A wannabe Cal Drogo. Yeah. <laughs> Not like a wannabe Don Draper with a ponytail. But you're really, Cal Drogo. Yeah. Or you're like a mix between Don Draper and Cal Drogo. So it's just Cal Drogo in like a very nice gray suit with a fedora hat on. Oh, that's a good look. Walking around town. Yeah, that's a crazy I'd, look. I'd listen to that guy. That's, I would be... I, you would have to because you'd be so terrified if you didn't. He would murder you, rip your tongue out. Oh my god. And then he right. would market the tongue to you. Tongue. And you would be thinking it was awesome. Tongue. Tongue. Anyway. Joffrey oh. dies. <laughs> Joffrey dies. Uh, Cersei looks to Tyrion, who's slowly picking up the cup. And then uh, she goes, You yeah, killed him! And Tywin's yeah. like, Take him! Take him! Uh, I know it. Uh, Sansa. He says that? Who? What? Tywin doesn't say that. Let's see. Let's watch. Tywin no, does no, no. not say Tywin that. Tywin shakes his head. Yeah, he's just shaking his head. But I don't think Tywin... I don't think he does it in a way that's like, Yeah, it's him! I think he's just like, uh, I think I don't know. Time is too way, cool and calm, though. He does it in a way that maybe he knows <laughs> what knew happened. It. Maybe he did it. Also, while this is happening, while Joffrey starts to choke, Dantos goes over to Sansa yes. and is like, uh, "Come that. with me if you want to live." Uh, basically, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. we can get out of here now. We can get out. Sansa, Sansa, the job. Look. <laughs> Sansa, sky's poisoned. Just follow me through here. Take those cookies. Stop <laughs> eating them. I'm drunk. <laughs> uh, oh god, they can't juggle the balls They're everywhere <laughs> they're, they're dropping like flies That's right, you can't knock my hat off This is my hat <laughs> We're uh, only doing this because we can't do it for Chin Guy anymore So sad Oh yeah, I forgot <laughs> Oh yeah, we were doing it for Chin Guy I almost regret that it's not Chin Guy Because Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, illegitimate son Yeah, no oh man Who was a rapper, apparently <laughs> It's unbelievable to me but uh, but yeah, so Dantos basically takes Sansa away, mm-hmm. and now Tyrion's just left alone holding a cup. Now, these first two episodes, have you noticed a lack of a one character who was pretty prominent? Hold on. Perhaps a counterpart to another character who has no balls or, or dick, and who's bald and wears robes and likes Tyrion a lot? Like a counterpart to that guy? Maybe oh, a yes. A rival of sorts? Who? Who are we talking about? Maybe. Oh, Littlefinger. Yeah. No, he left. That's why. Yeah, we know that he left. Disregard everything I just said? Yeah, he left last season. <laughs> that's why he, he says to Sansa, he's like, come with me, I'm leaving. All right, I'm and just... And this is your chance, you can get away, I'll take you away with me. And then she decides to stay because she thinks she's going to marry Loras, but then that all goes to pot, and Littlefinger's gone, it's too late. Goes to pot. Yeah. You have a lot of little expressions that I never hear, but you say sometimes. And that might be like a British one. Some cheese falling off the cracker. That was. You one. never heard that one? That's like... <laughs> no, I've what? never heard of either Cheese of is slipping off the, his cracker? Uh, He's going insane? Off the off the pot? When There's it, something, isn't the there pot? one? <laughs> yeah, like... The, like He's hopped Went the down scotch. the shitter. Done up like a kid. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> He's hopped his scotch. He what a douche. his loo. <laughs> They <laughs> skipped his loo. These are like the lamest ones. His goose is cooked. Well, it, that's an actual one. It's curtains, man. 
<laughs> no, you can't it's say Bacon's it. Bird. You can't say it's curtains, man. It's curtains. Like a hippie. Yeah, it's curtains. Man, <laughs> You got to do it like that. It's curtains, eh? Right. It's curtains, man. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just bringing up Littlefinger He's because... He's two lamb chops short of a full grill. It's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. He's not the brightest bulb. Anyway, man, Jeffrey... Blood spurting out of his mouth. These bl- mm-hmm. n- noses, bloody eyes are b- bleeding. It, yes. it was a painful, horrible death. Now, boss, I want you to know, like, everything from the beginning of last season to now, this has all been in the third book. This is why the third book is so popular. You have this to- is all third book still, except for Jamie being back already. That's, like we this said before, that happens in the fourth book later after Joffrey's already died. But uh, this is basically all third... This is all... This happens just. Does this happen? This happens after the red wedding, right? Yes. Okay. Because something. Is why it's so oh yeah, yeah. No, it, yeah, no, it does. No, because I was trying to remember. I remember reading the books, and I remember something. I knew something. A friend of ours told me, like, oh my god, something insane happens in the third book, and it made him like stop reading the book for like a month. Yeah, a uh, makeup artist did an excellent job on Joffrey's face. That's. Uh... Yeah, I wonder how much of that was. Uh, and this poison CG'd that's used in. is the poison that's at the beginning of the third book, right? Where uh, someone's trying to poison. This is not in the show. Someone's trying to poison Melisandre. The Meister, right? the Maester at um, Dragonstone is trying to kill Melisandre with this herb that closes your throat and you constricts your breathing. That's what's used on Joffrey here. Now, if you think about it, Meister Pycell was <laughs> oh, p- very pissed off that, by Cersei. Yeah, I don't know that he would go to those lengths, though. But I'm just saying, a, a Meister in the book in yeah. the past tried the same herb to yeah. kill someone else uh, uh, we forgot to mention too that the, the maester is cersei you know uh another well, first marjorie is ma- uh you know makes an announcement that all the leftovers are going to be uh, given to the poor mm-hmm. and uh cersei's like oh you're such a wonderful example to us all and then she goes over to the ma- maester pycelle whom whom she hates and uh he's busy like accosting a young woman yeah um saying oh well, I'll, uh, just like I'll a examine, serving girl i'll examine, examine, you examine you myself um, uh, yes and then uh you know he's just like an old lech and yeah. then and then she basically forces him to go to the kitchen to say no these the food's going to the kennels and you can see she's clinging to the uh queen regent power and status which now she will maintain after joffrey is dead mm-hmm. also you see toman Toman's. Oh, in that's this. right. Yeah, we didn't is that the that. same kid? Did that kid grow up that fast, or is that a different actor? I don't know because I don't remember. I can't remember seeing him at all. And uh, he looks much older in the show than I imagined he was in the book at this point. I saw him yeah. laughing at the midgets. He liked that. But then, but then you see he's laughing, and then he turns to Tyrion, and then he stops immediately. All right. So uh, this episode was. Uh, one of those episodes, just like the Red Wedding, that I was waiting for, and and like one of those parts where I was like, "Oh man, yeah. I hope this show makes it to the <laughs> the fourth season." Now, I hope the show makes it to the fourth season. Oh, by the way, this is the fourth season. Yeah, the first episode of the fourth season got more ratings than I think the Sopranos finale. It was like the highest rated show. Well, this on HBO. No, it's a cultural phenomenon yeah. more so than the Sopranos. This is like people are obsessed with Game of Thrones. Yeah. That's why you know what? It's it's reaching people who would never be into fantasy normally. That's the difference. It's crossing that barrier. Yes. But now I think we should move on to the next segment of uh, what did Boss think? Boss. Boss has hey some guys. notes. Hey. All right, my little uh-huh. list. First, Boss's list. First and foremost, go. what's the shaving cream made of? That's true. Maybe some sort of uh, butter, like a cream. It Remember, like Kramer and Seinfeld. Edible. Kramer and Seinfeld. He was using the butter. <laughs> I would imagine if you like really froth up milk. It was frothy. Th- yeah, if you froth up like milk, that would make like a good it lubricant would for your skin. Use for uh, I don't know. I don't there know, must be man. some kind of medieval egg answer for that that they actually use. Egg whites, so look maybe. That up. Beaten egg whites. There has to be a ration. Like there must be an actual thing that they used in maybe some kind of medieval times or something. Okay. But I think in the show it's probably Barbasol. Right. <laughs> right. Ramsey being shaved is brought to you by Barbasol. Close shave America. Close shave Westeros. When you're cutting Close shave a dick. Barbasol. When a dick needs a cut, you don't want it. I was trying to write Fuck dick up. and dick. <laughs> well, it's a commercial. I can't. Oh. <laughs> fuck, fuck. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Shave. <laughs> this is like some it's the life of a porn star fuck 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 shave Eat. profanity shave gel all right yeah fuck I, gel 
No, yeah, someone looked that up. What is medieval shaving cream, if they even used any? If anyone who even had access to a sharp enough razor at that time to shave, what sort of lubricating skin ointment would they use? I would yeah. imagine some sort of dairy product, like a frothy milk substance. Frothy, Egg whites, yeah. Frothy milk. Maybe, uh, yeah. I don't know. I got nothing. This makes sense to me. I was going to say right. jizz, but... Oh, I... maybe animal fats. <laughs> what an animal... Well, you get a lot of breakouts. I feel probably. like, yeah, they would break out constantly. Same thing with butter. Uh, not that they really bathed regularly anyway. Who knows? All right. I, th- I thought the vision was weird. I didn't get much out of that. Oh, Bran's vision? Yeah, it should be like future stuff, not Pacific past Rim. stuff. Well, it, well, we were speculating, but it could be future stuff as well. Yeah, I don't know. So well, I don't think, think that there's anything stuff. that happened in the past where like there's ash raining down on the on the Iron Throne. Yeah, that's why I was kind of thinking like could he see things that might have been That could be, yeah. in the past. What was lost. Like I was questioning like is everything what, he sees what was it was like Galadriel of Frodo in the in Galadriel's mirror there. Things that were things, things that are some and things some things have not yet come to pass. Will you look into the mirror? What will I say? I really liked what happened to Theon. I think that's pretty fun. I don't know. That's I think it's fun. Gonna be, uh... <laughs> that's what he said. I don't that's know. It, it intrigues me. It, it intrigues me. It intrigues him. <laughs> yes. Good God. He's going <laughs> to murder what us. Points from Ramsay's side or from Theon? Would you want to be Ramsay or Theon? I just think it's a cool concept that he has this little guy who used to torture oh following him around. What a cool concept. How cool and intriguing. No, like, what fun no, to have. I don't think. To have, uh, Tortured either, someone to the point where they blindly the obey you. I think it's cre- a creative idea. Oh, okay. I don't think that it's it's a nice thing for that a That is Theon. a creative idea. <laughs> that's that's all. That's why that's, that's what's cool about it. I've never thought of that okay. kind of thing going on. Well, it and just I, and scares I me. Have, and I couldn't have predicted anything it like that. It scares me when you say things like, mm, that looks fun. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll have to try that out no, one day. And, and when I say that looks fun, I think, I'm thinking, oh, this... this is going to get cool later on when we see more stuff I think with him in and terms him of a betraying narrative, him, possibly. In a story, he thinks that's a right. fun concept. Not the idea of what happened to Theon and it's itself. Fun for, no, but it's also fun for me thinking what's going to happen later with that. Is he going to betray him? What's going to... Right. Yeah. He doesn't want to actualize it. No, He's not going to make it part of his actual life. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. so we can Just sit here that. not in fear for now. And why does he he runs weird? Is he like bound a little, or what's going on? Is he just? I think all he's just maimed? so broken. Yeah, I think he's he's very ma- he's extremely okay. weak in the book. Yeah. And um, also, Ramsey also says like you flayed him. He says yeah, bits right. and pieces here and there. So yeah. who knows? Maybe cut off a few toes. Right. Maybe and, and the book he was like basically just kept in a dungeon. He couldn't even like move, so he's just kind of withering away. Yeah. And like George Martin describes like how much like he's got like. His a lot of his hair is gone. It's like gray and wispy. Like he is not good. He is a shell, like a weak shell of a human being. So I think mm-hmm. they're just making him, you know, weak and injured here. Now let's get the Joffrey stuff. I thought that he was gonna just whip out his crossbow and start shooting people who were performing <laughs> for fun. Pulls <laughs> it out from under the table. Yeah. Ha-ha! Right. <laughs> I was. That's why I was like on the edge of my seat. I was making this sound a lot. <laughs> well, I'm so nervous. Was. I was but, nervous when he pulled that the sword out to cut the pie. I was nervous when he cut pulled the sword out when he first got it. I was yeah. like, "Oh my god, he's gonna cut!" No, he's like, like his whipping own it around the table, and yes. you can see like Cersei's even like rearing back a little bit. Everyone was like, "Whoa, what the fuck?" Yeah, like calm down. Take it's it like easy, a, like you give someone a gun, and it's like, "Oh wow, this is cool. Look, everyone oh, it was a loaded wow, <laughs> flailing it about." Oh my god. Yeah, I thought he was going to start doing something crazy, like shoot a couple people for fun. Like, yeah, hey, now this is good, right, everybody? Yeah, it's huh? a wedding. Oh, yeah. That's what happens. And then, oh, I'm a little disappointed, obviously, because he's dead now. And he was a big, like, I don't know, the, the fear was there. Now the fear is gone for me a little bit. Yeah, but now you have to think, what the hell is going to happen now? Like, he was the king. Right, but but while he was the king, I was thinking, what the hell is going to happen now when now he's on he's the screen? Thinking, what the hell is going to happen to Tyrion? <laughs> right. Like, honestly, I don't think he did that many, like, for me at least, I don't th- you think he could have did some more crazy shit before he went. Really? You don't yeah. think he did enough? To... No, I think he could have did <laughs> some more God. crazy shit, because there's a lot of threats that you were like, oh, man, what's he going to do? But it never really... Hey, who knows if they'll me. ever, if they film stuff that maybe in the future they're going to use as like a little flashback here and there or something? Oh, yeah, you never know. It might be something. Hopefully. I could only be so lucky, right? Whatever visions Bran might have. 
Okay, so which we didn't talk about. Uh, Bran says he knows where he needs to go, which apparently after that scene, he they cut to King's Landing, implying that Bran feels he needs to go to King's Landing. So they've been going in the opposite yeah, but, direction. Uh, well, yeah, but, then, but the, <laughs> the voice clearly says north <coughs> as well. Right. But on the positive side, I'm still I'm now scared of the Dornish guy in every scene because I don't know what he's gonna do. He's crazy. So even though. The that's fear that's of another person. You Joffrey's to... gone. Now there's the fear of the Dornish. That's guy's another person. Craziness. You have to remember, hated the Lannisters. Mm-hmm. Another guy who had an incentive oh, yeah. to uh, murder. Yeah, I was. I was thinking maybe he's gonna whip out a dagger and do something here. There was this weird shot. Remember when they pan back? There was a guy with a knife doing this. Did you see that? No. Yeah, he was. He was either like a knife thrower or some guy cutting some. But he had this very large knife that I immediately noticed. I think it was put there to make people think. Is someone about to throw a knife at Joffrey? I noticed that little detail. Oh, I didn't weird. notice that at all. Yeah. I was too busy, like, crapping my pants they, I guarantee, in they, anticipation of what They was probably had happen. so much fun coming up with, like, okay, we got to make people nervous here. Like, and so they were trying to think, okay, we got flame people. We got, you know, <laughs> knife people. Like, some, yeah, let's put in little things here to make I mean, people just, confused. just basically, just Joffrey being there makes me nervous. Right. Because he's just capable of doing anything. I'm thinking, my theory is that it maybe it's... You know, you're supposed to think, oh, maybe it was one person who did it, but I think it was more of like a plot, a bunch of people. Right. Like maybe a Granny Tyrell and Tywin plot. Tywin? How about that? Tywin killing his own grandson? Oh, yeah. I don't know why Tywin would do that. He just got the match that he wanted, that he was fighting for, because he's now... He's in control. He's Joffrey's his puppet, basically. Now they have a strong union with the Tyrells. So they have a, a lot of money, and they've secured the South, and uh, they've got their forces. But the other uh, thing is, didn't why didn't the fool guy know before he was like dying that it was really poison? Well, that's what so I'm saying. He knew before that that as. As Joffrey starts choking, he right. immediately goes to Sansa. And was right. Like, so he Come knew with me if you want to what live. was going to happen. So he was somehow he knew involved. What was going on. So that's why it must be a big. Maybe Tywin plot. hired him. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> oh, we should we should get to the comments. Oh, they, okay, they yeah. fooled me though. All right, so we're gonna go to uh, your comments. Uh, this these are comments having that were put on our two swords review, which is extremely late. These are all comments from today. No, oh, okay. And I I said on the video like feel free to leave comments for last night's episode. Uh, so we'll see what we got here. First one is from Who DF. Quality video, he says. No. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Next one is from Gaming Shenanigans, who left oh. a novel. Oh, <laughs> All right, so I'm going to read your comments here, and Uh-oh. you guys respond. <clears throat> First thing is, uh, it wasn't anyone's dire wolf. It was just a wolf pelt added to the regular right. scabbard. Right, thank you. And sized for a... Z- z- it's v- symbolic. V-hander great sword, the type of sword ice is. All right, fine, whatever. Jeez, yeah, take it easy. Stupid. Dexter. Yeah, fuck you, man. Could have been a dire wolf. I say it is a dire wolf. It's kind of small for a dire wolf. That's right. It was Keep a going. baby Keep dire going. wolf. Keep okay, going. baby dire wolf. It was a pup. That's, I'm liking the way they're dealing with Jamie's turning point. He's finally seeing that Joffrey became and how unbalanced Cersei is. It's a nice change from Jamie, the I don't give a damn version we had in earlier books. Plus, that hand waving motion was hilarious. I think he's talking about when I did a jerk off motion. See, you haven't watched a cartoon. <laughs> oh, yet. yeah, right, oh, right. right. No, yeah. I, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah, I know he's yeah. not. <laughs> um, Oberon gave me real. Inigo Montoya vibes. I keep expecting yes. him to say, you killed my sister. Prepare to die. <laughs> the guy who was playing him was amazingly talented and nailed it perfectly. Yeah, he did. Uber He's Mike Hell, the science guy, was a cool aspect, too. Because <laughs> we made jokes that he was explaining, like, the wrists and the... Surface. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is the temperature of boiling water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, in quotes, Whatever. he puts the. He advent- loves science. He loves to learn. The Adventures of Gregor C- Clegane. That's when I was asking you, oh, if they made a show about Gregor C- Clegane, if they, that could ever work. I don't think it could because it would be a snuff film. Uh, <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> this is why we haven't seen any. Cats. It would be like a hentai snuff film. <laughs> like, ra- hentai like rated Z. being raped with like bizarre <laughs> objects and animals, and <laughs> it would be horrifying. It would be an absolute nightmare. And he just was going, ha, 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 the entire time. 
This is what this is why we haven't seen any cats yet. The dragons are the cats of Westeros. <laughs> there's, no, there's no cats. Well, you have dragons. What about the cat that Arya was trying to catch? Where's the litter? Dragon, box? dragon in disguise. <laughs> that, no, oh, really? Oh, okay. yeah. It was a dragon with a little cat costume. You know, some people dress up their pets. That's true. Yeah, there was yeah. probably a dragon with a cat costume. Oh, that definitely, was, like, man. Like a foot long. Yeah. Um, I like that Dario has his beard now. But the recast seems odd because they didn't create a new character to take over his role. And unlike the mountain mountains, he's not a bit part. Yeah, that's true. Like, imagine if Dar- they just made an excuse like Dara go away and just make him another character to take his place. It is- that is one thing about this show that I don't like, that they just replaced it. It's like in the Matrix. Well, Dara becomes so- too important. Uh... Yeah, but remember the Matrix, the... Um, oh, the Oracle. The they Oracle. The, I mean, yeah, the woman yeah, passed yeah. away. Or like Doctor Who. Yeah, uh, you know when the doctor they explain you know how the doctor has to regenerate to save himself and then he's his appearance changes. Yeah, but That's you see those all make sense within yeah. the universe of that world. Oh yeah, world. absolutely. And the, here it's just well they didn't want to. I mean I understand why they didn't want to change the character completely because then they'd basically that'd be that'd be too much. That'd be such a huge change. Yeah, I think they yeah. would have been worried about backlash from fans maybe because he's such a huge character. But it's also like. Right, I don't know. Right. That's that's way too much for them. I think they just had to bite the bullet and. Yeah. I mean, luckily he wasn't in it too much, like where he was so established that actor. You know what I mean? He really only had the one episode. Yeah. And mostly, I remember seeing Daenerys's tits more than anything else. <laughs> okay. Because like, he was in that one scene when she was in the tub. Gaming Shenanigans also says Sir Dantos and his Captain America Shield have been missing for far too long. They managed to make him rather poetic, actually. Even drunk as balls, he can still wax philosophical. Did he have a Captain America Shield, uh, or is he getting? I don't. I don't remember that. And wa- wax poetical. He well, just he says, does come with me. No, I'm, he's talking about last week's episode. Oh, okay. I thought uh, I was talking about uh, no. He does say some things like episode. his mother and his life. And oh stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember the shield. I guess he had a shield when Joffrey force fed him wine. Was he? Oh, maybe him, at like, that point. Maybe at something? that point. I don't know. I think he was more knight like in appearance. Right. I love Tormund's I fucking hate Pikey moment. <laughs> this guy's British, right? That's a British. Maybe, well, that's from the movie Snatch. Right. Yeah. I fucking hate Pikey's. I Pikey's. Oh, oh you bastard. This is Jason. Why did you tell me it was Pikey's? Jason Statham. Oh, fucking eight Pikey's. Jason Statham. <laughs> That's Jason Statham. That's All right, hold terrible. on, hold on, hold on. You took my daughter. You don't know who I am. I don't know who you are. I will find you, and I will kill you. I will kill you. I will find you. I will kill you. you took my I have daughter. Ridiculous set of skills. You Liam Neeson. Bill Murray. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, Liam Neeson's always like an American, but with. His normal Liam Neeson accent. I'm He's American. just Liam Neeson. I'm an American agent. Liam Neeson is his own beast. There's few actors. Can get, Sean Connery again get away with that. I love uh, Tormund's I fucking hate Pikey moment because let's face it, the Thens seem like guys that everyone would hate on principle. Kind of bummed that they skipped on the leader's bone armor and the lack of ears, but the facial ridges are oh, kind of Oh, that's cool. right. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. They would wear ears. I remember he had oh, the whole cool. he had the whole thing. It was like a whole suit of armor they, made out of bones. Why didn't they put that in? Uh, John's trial happened a little earlier than in the book, uh, but they did it quite well, especially with Maester Aemon providing a voice of reason. John's excellent lambasting of Jeno Slint was amusing, as was Slint himself with his whole giants bollocks. Before noticing that yeah. Thorn is actually taking it seriously now, uh, he demanded the chickens because he was clearly becoming Colonel Sander. And he needed chickens to go with the secret herbs and spices. He was using a longsword as well in a place where he couldn't get enough room to swing. He's just like, Oi, I've got these fucking herbs and spices, and I need some chickens to put them on. I got big plans. <laughs> Open up a chain. Franchise, mate. For all the cunts. franchise. That'll, sh- that'll slow you down. So he's also saying, like, remember Boss said, like, he actually had, like, a pretty good fight in there. Uh, Boss thought he would actually, like, take him that out That makes quicker. sense. I like that. Yeah, he, he was, was like, doing a lot of punching, so he, he sounds correct. Yeah, he was brawling a lot. Mm-hmm. He's a brawler. All right. Uh, Claire Gray, uh, she says happy dance to start with. Okay. Because she was happy. Happy dance. Um, I see. Happy dance. I apologize to you, Claire. I said it was going to come out Thursday. It didn't. Now, <laughs> Claire is, so Claire Claire is nothing, on you. Claire's quickly learned what a liar Oxnard <laughs> is. Now you know how we feel. I'm not dependable. And his family. Or Echo Argo. Great episode, guys. Looking forward to hear Boss's reaction to the next one. I had no idea they <laughs> recasted Dario and was confused 
as fuck <laughs> as to who the bearded guy was. But at least now he resembles the book character more. The previous Ooh. Dario actor is oh. apparently going to be in the new Transporter movies with Jason Statham. So if you miss... No, I didn't, I'm out of that. What? So, so this guy left Game of Thrones to be in the next Transporter movie? Wouldn't you do the same? I guess I would. Gym? Having never no. seen those movies. Wait, is he, is he going to be with oh, Jason like... Statham or is he going to be the new Jason Statham character? I would think he would be the new Jason Statham character. Yeah, Previous story I was pretty apparently going to the new Transporter movies. So if you miss the chin, you know where to find them. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get my chin fixed. Oh, I miss it. Oh, my God. I just was Googling the guy and just looking at the chin. It's just <laughs> shocking to me. I can't look away. I just, the oh, my God. Lips. I'm disgusted the by all these eyebrow. inferior chins. <laughs> Seriously, as someone who has a, like an, an average chin, I think, that chin is like ridiculous boss just so when i said it has an average and boss just looks at me and is like gives like a like a scowl and just a nod yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah uh claire gray again uh worth the wait man set the wall guys guys remember we did that yeah the oh, flame yeah. hey the flame. He sold the hey flame. you I see me <laughs> was hilarious I i'm knew, here i knew boss would like the thens but to refer to them as hippies in the north classic boss i, I did <laughs> i did I don't even remember that. I thought the thin sound... did, and it was classic. <laughs> classic, classic boss. Classic boss. I thought, oh, damn. I thought the thin sounded Scandinavian. Fit oh, like, yeah, that's a good call. They fit did. like the Muppet Chef. Well, you've got to try some crew. Just once you get a taste of crew. We came from the south and you didn't even know. The board is iron to chicken choppy and choppy. Is this offensive enough yet? I don't know. Hey, the Muppets did it. Yeah. You know what? Are the Muppets offensive? If the Muppets did it, then it's okay forever. Right. Yeah. It's okay forever. Well, that's why. Hey, it looks like he bit off more than he can chew. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, the yeah, old guys. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they make terrible jokes yeah, the, in the, the, the mystery. <laughs> science and I'm pretty theater. sure they're anti-Semitic. <laughs> yeah, mystery okay. science theater guys. Before there was mystery science theater. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the Walking Dead has clearly desensitized cannibalism and butchery for Dexter. I'm a tiny bit <laughs> terrified of his first thoughts now. That's when right. you're talking about a woman the being splitting split in woman. Half. Look. Yeah. You should be. I didn't say that I liked it. I'm not like Boss, where I was well, like, he was Ooh, smiling when torture, he said it. it sounds like a fun idea to me. I was like, this is, it was terrified me. Oh, I didn't read this. This looks interesting. Com- competition idea from Mr. Gray. Design a knight in the comments. What's the finest battle? Sigil. Pitcher ideas, and Oxnard draws the winning knight. Design a knight. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Remember we were talking about like a pork knight? How about like a yeah. wildling knight? Remember you said you wanted to be the pepper knight? Right, yeah. <laughs> the pepper knight. Yeah, right. <laughs> like a jalapeno pepper? Well, that's like, the conversation like that we ground had. pepper. <laughs> that's the conversation I can't that remember. ensued I'm after. not remembering this conversation. <laughs> no, yeah. I think I was pretty exactly hammered what we ensued. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was hammered last time. How about the banana did. knight? <laughs> well, this is it's no. Valid. that was a conversation <laughs> from banana. last season. That was like oh. the finale discussion. We asked Boss what night he would be, I think. Right. And I said Pepper Night. Oh, okay. I think. <laughs> I guess. We'll go with Claire. Classic Boss. Classic Claire. Classic Claire. Boss. Classic Claire, right back at you. Okay. Uh, Classic Mr. Gray, by the way. Claire Gray from the field. Uh, she says, <laughs> news from Man- Manchester. 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 Okay. What, Manchester. What, what is that? It? That's not a hard Manchester. word to say. It's looks news like... from Man- <laughs> Manchester. Manchester. <laughs> It looks like Manchester. It looks like Manchester. 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 Yeah. Okay. News from Manchester. I thought, I thought Claire maybe lived in Islington. I don't know. I'm just naming random places that I think Borrowworth. The Hag Downs. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Hag Downs? The, the Lump Works. The Mo Bottom Squatter. Le- the, the Left Rose. The Left Nuts. I know someone who knows the dwarf who played Renly at the Five Kings Wedding Feast Joust. Really? Six degrees of Tyrion Bacon. Nice. It's <laughs> Kevin Bacon. Right. Oh, I get Tyrion it. Tyrion Bacon. I yeah, totally there you go. went over my head. <laughs> that. Well, that's great. Classic boss. <laughs> it's great that we all know a guy who knows a little guy. Right. Because in the end, isn't that all that it means? Yes. <laughs> All right, so I guess say? Claire has decided the competition, and I kind of like that because... Okay. Or Mr. Gray has. 
Okay. Yeah, Mr. Gray. Again, get through, it right. Six degrees. Through degree, Claire. Six degrees of separation. Through Claire. Six degrees of Tyrion Bacon. Via Claire. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's this week. Uh, in the comments, if you've made it this far, uh, come up with your idea for a knight. Or if Give you him like some kind end. of like attribute. Give him some scarring. Give him some kind of like thing he does with yeah, his Yeah, like armor. some special skill, like... Uh, one of the knights like that George Martin talks about, you know, they reference he would the guy would set a sword on fire, mm-hmm. right? You know, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, give him like some kind of special skill. Now, don't go all fourth grade retard on us and like, and, and then he has like five superpowers and he has like a third arm from <laughs> and magic. he's got a rhinoceros head and he shoots and lasers out of his ass when he's not moving. He's invisible. Like, keep it. Se- <laughs> Yeah, semi-real. When he's not moving, he's invisible. That's awesome. <laughs> and I'll throw this in there. I'm a sucker for a good flail, all right? <laughs> boss. Classic boss. Classic <laughs> sucker for a good flail. <laughs> even What does right. that mean? I don't know. Like the weapon. Oh, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know what a sucker is. Yeah, none of this of boring sword stuff. I'm getting scared because he's a sucker for a good flail. He's thinking Ramsey's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's what just, I was Seems head, fun. Though intriguing flails throw some flails in there he'd be all up on it so yeah come up with a night um, <laughs> every single one is a flail i'll email you guys uh any things odds are it's just gonna be like one person co- it's probably gonna be claire <laughs> yeah, mr. Gray. Mr. Gray. Mr. Gray. mr gray and he's gonna come Ten with page ex- everything that we said not to <laughs> oh penis night <laughs> <laughs> get it guys knob night because he's knob british night. knob night choking the baby night <laughs> wanka night Choking the baby night. Ch- ch- choking the baby, the baby night. Oh, it's just a, a regular night with his arm outstretched and a baby <laughs> at his in his hand. He's setting me up to just draw something horrifying. <laughs> yes. Oh my god! But that's the competition. Tit night. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Just a tit with legs. <laughs> All right. So as you Anime know, this is going to be. Uh, <laughs> Uh, cartoons are becoming <laughs> bucks of night. That's what's gonna happen yeah. now. It Big is, tit whore night. Draw cartoons. Spot. Porno night. <laughs> it's a dick sucking night. Wrinkle night. Wrinkle <laughs> night. What is that? It has what to is be. What's that gonna look like? Make it be a night named after a physical object, not just an actual cock night. night. Yeah, right. Yeah, Co- yeah. Cock ring night. Shit night. Um, Shit night. Ass night. Now these sound like events rather than nights. Yeah, they shit do. night, night, everybody. <laughs> Have a shit night. Uh, yeah, do that. Maybe Pussy night. Come up with like a little bio for the character. <laughs> maybe a name. And uh, yeah, I'll sketch him out and I'll put him up. But uh, okay, so... Yeah, penis night. He had, he had an interaction. <laughs> he end. The guy has a huge penis. No, he's a and normal night. he encountered some, some toxic sewage that <laughs> mutated him into just one gigantic penis with a face. And, and a he penis. Decided, I'm right, picturing... And he decided, I will fight for justice and good in the world. And penis. And I'm I will come all over it. A normal night, but just no armor... On his, it's just his, he's Nude hanging, night. slapping oh, in the breeze. Or, or, that's, or, that's all. He's covered in armor except for his that's penis, yeah, which no hangs armor out. Oh, yeah, right, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, he, or he only has armor on his penis and he uses it as a weapon. Claire. Maybe he's got Claire. like a like a piece that he done? attaches to his penis. <laughs> they won't stop, And it's got Claire. like a gigantic sword at the Claire, end. Claire, they're not stopping. So he's got like a basically like a big penis mace. The idea of the competition. A penis flail. Oh, that's a good idea. You can yeah. like... You, hey, you, Mr. Oh, Gray, not, do that one. You know, like it's like booby tassels, but There's like the, a penis flail. I'm pretty, right. I imagine like, They're yes, let's stopping. battle. And the guy like unveils his penis flail. And then it's just like kind of any, <laughs> yeah. and then he just immediately gets killed. <laughs> yeah. He just gets his dick chopped off so and then ridiculous. he's screaming and then his head's lopped off. Well, That's contest a- is over, I guess. So <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody for participating. <laughs> wow. That went on. Yes. Um, so basically, uh, this is going to. If you're listening to this, is the hey, audio. Man, the fu- Hold on, I'm trying to do the ending. Then you can hey. talk. Uh, at, this is going to be the audio portion. That's going to be released audio immediately. Um, the uh, cartoons. I'm going to pick different parts as I listen to draw little cartoons for. It. That's going to end up being a shorter video later in the week. In the comments, please tell us. Talk if faster. A, talk faster. If there's a part in faster. in this video that you want us to want me to draw and animate, let, let us know and uh, I'll see if I can get to it. So there you go. Uh, have a great time. Look forward to more discussions. Penis night! And uh, penis night. Safe um, travels. What about a night night? Oh, shit. Get Mind it? blown. Like, night. It's a night dressed as a, it's a night. night. in a night in a night in a night. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye.